Thank you for your interest here at North Hills, where we are more than Sunday. If you have any questions or would like to know more about our ministries, you can always visit us online at north-hills.org. Now join us as Pastor James delivers his message. Shows I love going to the library and reading a good book. And I think if we're truly honest, most stories whether or not they're movies, whether or not they're books, or whether or not they're TV shows are pretty predictable. There's not a whole lot that's out of the ordinary that we don't expect. The guy always gets the girl. Good always overcomes evil. The good guy usually wins. Titanic always sinks. We've kind of been conditioned with this to know that in movies, things resolve themselves. It works out in the end. It's in between that we're kind of trying to figure out how it's all going to work out. You see, we expect that the ending is going to work out, but in the middle, in that time period between the beginning of the story and the end of the story, we have to kind of figure out how's it all going to work out? How is that guy going to get the girl? How is good going to overcome such incredible evil? And we'll watch movies over and over and over again. And and there there are these movies that no matter how many times we've seen them, they still captivate our imagination and we still wonder, is this the time where this movie is gonna turn out differently? Is this the time that, okay, he's not gonna get the girl? Is this the time that that good is, is not gonna overcome evil? Is this the time that Titanic is going to make it to New York? But we know that's not the way that the world works. We know that in the world, the story doesn't always end the way that it does in the movies. We understand that there's a certain degree of unexpected things that happen along the way. That we are going to have the unexpected happen to us. But then we have to remember that we are part of a bigger story. We're part of a bigger story that started a long time ago and will go on far after we're gone. We're part of a story that started in a garden, or maybe even before that, started just simply with God. And we'll continue on through history, and Jesus came in as a part of that story. Now the good thing is, is that we already know the ending to that story. For many of us, we've already cheated and turned to the end, And we've looked at the end, and it it happens in the book of Revelation. We know the ending to the story, that in the end, it all works out. That in the end, you know, if you think about it, the guy does get the girl. I know that sounds weird, but Jesus is the bridegroom, and the church is his bride. Good, the ultimate good, God does overcome evil. Everything works out. But here we are in the middle of the beginning and the end, in the, be- in the middle, trying to figure out how is this all going to work out. And the beautiful thing about Christmas is it talks about how God brought it all about to work out. In this video, we saw the story of Mary. Mary, as she tells it in her own words, how she felt, what it was like, those feelings that if we could put ourselves in her position, we would have similar feelings. But one thing that I've always been amazed with the story of Mary is that Mary had so much faith. Mary kind of just accepted that things were going to work out, and if it were me, And I'm going to speculate that if it were you, you might have a few more questions. You might have a few more doubts. You might have a little bit of that living in the middle of the story, trying to figure out how this is all going to work out. So if you have your Bibles, turn to the first chapter of Luke, and we'll pick up the story in 26. Remember the last time that we were here two weeks ago, we talked about Elizabeth. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin, and she had a miraculous story to tell herself as she brought forth a son in her old age after she was told for her entire life that she couldn't have children. 
where God brought life into barren places. And now we go on to the story of Mary. And if you have your Bible, uh, follow along in, in verse 26. If you don't, it'll be up on the screen. But we hear about something that happened to Mary that was completely unexpected. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, And this is the sixth month with her whom was called barren. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Mary was part of a long line of Jewish people that were waiting for the Messiah. And they'd been waiting for a very long time. And it had been a really long time since they had heard an update from God. They were all sitting around wondering, and they all expected that the Messiah was going to come someday. They all expected that that their oppression under Roman rule was one day going to work out. They expected that. They believed that one day God would fulfill his promise of sending the Messiah, but they didn't know how. They didn't know how it was all going to come about, and here we have Mary. Mary, a young, poor girl living in the city of Nazareth. Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. There is no way that she expected that God would use her to bring his son into the world. That God would use her to bring the the Messiah, the Savior of the world, into the world. She was a nobody. Not only was she nobody, she was a virgin. You have a child when you're a virgin, that's pretty unexpected. And then she's betrothed to a man named Joseph to be married. She hasn't even married him yet. Now when I think about this story, this is pretty unexpected. This just doesn't seem like something that God would do. It doesn't seem like something that God would do. You see, the way in which God chose to bring his son into the world is totally unexpected. And the way in which God chose to bring his son into the world is, it's fraught with problems. You see, this was not going to be easy. This wasn't going to be something that's just, okay, here's the son of God, worship him, he's the Messiah, good. We think about the story of Mary. Mary is told, you will bear a son, and he will be called the son of the most high God. And she said, how is this possible? I'm a virgin. Right there, number one problem we're going to face because she is betrothed to a man to be married, not yet married, and she is pregnant. Do you think the world is going to believe that little story? Oh, it's by the Holy Spirit. He's the son of God. He's the Messiah. God chose me. No, the world would have her killed because that's what they did with women who got pregnant out of wedlock back then, particularly with women who got pregnant out of wedlock, and it wasn't the betrothed. There was so much that could go wrong here. Joseph, who we'll talk about next week, could have had her stoned. He could have embarrassed her publicly. There's no way that anybody would ever listen to her again. This was totally unexpected. You think 
She's going to start worrying about, well, what's going to happen? How is this all going to work out? How is it that I'm going to even survive? But Mary trusted God. I don't know why Mary trusted God in that moment. She didn't really ask a whole lot of questions. All she asked were really one question. She said, how will this be, for I'm a virgin? The angel gives an answer. And I don't know about you, I'm not so sure I would accept this answer so readily. I'd want to know a little bit more details in this. But then after the angel says, nothing is impossible with God, in a great and amazing step of faith, she simply says, I'm the Lord's servant. Whatever you say will happen, I'm good with. What an amazing act of faith. And you have to wonder, where did that faith come from? Where did that faith come from? We're not really told a whole lot about Mary before this situation. We're not told a whole lot about her, but we are told a couple things that are pretty important to this story. The first thing we are told is that that she has found favor with God. She's found favor with God as somebody who is maybe a, a good Jewish girl. Someone who goes to synagogue, somebody who's actively pursuing her relationship with God and trying to follow the law. But whatever it is, she's found favor with God. And she trusts God. And my guess is this isn't the first time she's ever had to put her trust in God. This probably isn't the first time that something has happened that was unexpected and she had to trust in God. So what we're talking about today is from the The earliest stories of the first Christmas, stories of the the birth of Christ, the first story of Mary, I think we can learn from our past. When the unexpected comes, learn from the past to embrace the future. Learn from the past to embrace the future. You see, Mary, like I said, there's not a whole lot we know about her. But I think we can infer that there were times where she was forced to put her faith and trust in God. Maybe there were times when she was wondering where the next meal was going to come from. Maybe she was wondering something bad happens, wondering how am I going to get through this. Maybe she saw her parents struggle and she's wondering how are they going to make it through this. And through those times she learned that God is in control. That God has promised us things and God is faithful to bring about the things which he has promised. That God is in control in our situations even now and that the story will continue to go on. Now the first thing that we can see is that that God has promised us a lot in the past. So the first thing that we have to do to, to learn how to get through the present situation to get to the future is we have to remember God's promises. Now, when you think about the Old Testament, the Old Testament is Genesis through Malachi, and it contains a lot of promises of God, but it also contains a lot of God's fulfilled promises. A lot of times when God actually came through for his people. We think about the stories all the way back to, go back to, let's say, Egypt. And God said, I will deliver my people out of Egypt through Moses. And what did God do? He delivered his people out of Egypt. And countless times through the rest of the Old Testament, God is going to point back to that one moment when he delivered them out of Egypt and say, look at that time. If you're questioning whether or not I can do what I say now, look back there. And there are all these times throughout. Well, the big thing that God promised through all of the Old Testament was the Messiah. He promised that there was going to be a child born. He actually told us a lot about that child. He actually said that child will be born of a virgin. That child will be born in Bethlehem. And that child will save his people from, his, from their sins. They looked back to that promise. Mary looked back to that promise. I'm sure that there were countless times in Mary's own life where she held on to the promises of God to get through. So when she remembers God's promises, it helped her to get through this situation. I want you to think, is there ever any time in your own life 
where you've had that moment, that time, something unexpected happens. Maybe you lose your job. Maybe there's an illness in the family. Maybe there is this time where you don't know if things are going to work out. We've been conditioned to believe that things will work out. We know in our heads that God is in control, that God has promised us that things will work out. But we're kind of in that moment of waiting. Okay, God, when are you going to show up? When am I going to get another job? When is my loved one going to be healed? We get in those times of waiting, and we have to wonder, how are we going to get through this? And the way in which we get through that is we look back to the times God has shown up in the past. You see, we all have those moments when, when something unexpected happens, we don't know how we're going to get through it, and then wait, we get through it. God shows up. Sometimes God shows up at the last minute, but we make it through it. It all works out. We can use that, that feeling of when God shows up to get through the next time when something unexpected happens. Because something unexpected always happens. You're never going to be in that moment where you get through something unexpected and then all of a sudden nothing unexpected ever happens again. As long as we are breathing, the unexpected will happen and we have to learn how are we going to get through it. So the first thing we do is we have to remember that God has promised us certain things. God has come through in the past. But then we have to remember that God is in control now in the present. That God is in control of the situation. If you're somebody like Mary, you have to accept the fact that that if God is sending an angel to you, telling you that you are going to give birth to the Messiah, yes, it's a very weird circumstances, you're a virgin, you're betrothed to be married, something about that situation has me thinking, Mary probably thought, okay, if God is going to do this, then he's in control of what's going on and he's going to see me through it. And that takes a little bit of that fear, a little bit of that anxiety out of the unexpected situation that Mary's going through. You have, to, uh, you have to think, okay, if there's an angel, God's telling her, God's gonna see her through it. But I think that there was still a part of her that's wondering how. You know, when she gets to that first time where she has to tell her parents, I'm pregnant, you think there was a little bit of fear in that. Are they gonna believe me? I know this angel came. Can't an angel just go to them and tell our parents? I don't know if any of you ever tried this when you were a kid and you did something wrong and you tell your parents, oh, God made me do it. It doesn't work. They usually don't believe it. But I think there was something even more terrifying to her is Joseph. How am I going to tell Joseph that I'm pregnant? We know what happens she doesn't stick around Nazareth very long. She heads off to go see her, her cousin Elizabeth. She stays there three months, and after three months, she comes back to Nazareth, and it's pretty obvious by three months when somebody's pregnant. They kind of see, okay, something's not right here, and she has to wonder, how am I going to tell Joseph about this? That's when the past comes into the present. You think back, okay, God saw me through these times. It worked out in the past. I got through it. It wasn't the end of the world. You get to the present. Okay, if God was in control in the past, God is in control in the present. That means if God helped me through it in the past, he'll help me through it now. And that's when we just get into the waiting game. You see, there's always that period of waiting. There's a period of maybe you lose your job. You're looking for a new job. It takes a while and you wonder, am I going to be able to pay my bills? Am I going to be able to put food on the table? Am I going to be able to keep my car? Am I going to be able to keep my house? And, and you're wondering, how is this going to work out? And what do you do in that moment? Do you curl up in the fetal position? Do you fall into despair? Do you get that, that overwhelming anxiety? 
Or in those moments, do you go to God and simply say, God, you've helped me in the past. I trust that you'll help me now. And then you just wait. Some things that I don't like about God is that sometimes it feels like God shows up at the last minute. God shows up at the last minute. And I don't know why God chooses to do things that way, but maybe it's to increase our faith. When we get to that point and God is like, all right, you put your faith in me, I'm coming through for you. But the reality is that God is never late. God is always on time. And that period of waiting is simply meant, I think, to build our faith in him. Because that that moment of waiting, the longer it is that we wait for God to come through, when God comes through, it shoots our faith up and we recognize, okay, God came through. And then the next time that something unexpected happens, we have all the more faith to handle that. And then the present circumstance as God leads us through that, comes through for us, now becomes the past that we lean on in the future. God is in control in the past. He'll be in control in the future or in the present. But then we also have to remember that the story isn't over yet. We think about the story of Mary. Mary gave birth to a son in Bethlehem, just as God said that she would. Joseph didn't divorce her. We'll talk about him next week. It worked out to the point that they're in Bethlehem, according to the scriptures, Jesus is born in a stable. It all worked out. But the story isn't over there. There's more story to come. There's more of Jesus' story to come. There's more of Mary's story to come. This isn't going to be the last time that Mary has to go through a tough time. We look at Jesus and we think he is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is our God. And he died on the cross in the past for us. But for Mary, that was all future. And she had a special bond to him, to Jesus. She was his earthly mother. And she was going to have to watch as he grew up, worrying about each and every step that he might take. Could she actually, as a mom, mess up God's plans? Could she as a mom like not be watching baby Jesus one day and all of a sudden baby Jesus hurts himself? Or the worst case scenario, could baby Jesus actually die before the time came? I wonder if she thought about these things. I know there's mothers in this room or fathers in this room. We wonder about whether or not our kids are going to grow up or we're going to mess them up. Did she wonder, am I going to mess up the Messiah of God? But then she has to remember, no, God is in control. And I think that's helpful for us who are parents to remember that God is in control even of our children. That even we can't mess our kids up so bad that God can't redeem them. For us, it's been 2,000 years since Jesus died on the cross. We look back over that story. We look back at all of the things through church history that have happened that have brought us to this place today here in this building in Vallejo, California. All the story that was woven through history. The missionaries like Paul who took the gospel to the nations, who then planted churches that began to send out missionaries to England to send missionaries to the new world the United States history that's brought us to today, that we are here today in a place where we are free to worship. That's our story. That's the past faithfulness of God. But even today, our story's not over yet. North Hill's story is not over yet. The story of the church is not over yet. There is still more story to come. There are still more unexpected things that are on the way that we are going to deal with as they come. And the question is, when those unexpected things happen, how are we going to handle it? Are we going to curl up in the fetal position? 
Or are we gonna say, I'm gonna make this happen? I've got all the answers? Or are we, like Mary, simply going to be obedient and say, I'm, we, you are the Lord's servant. Whatever comes our way, we are gonna trust in God. God has got us this far. For North Hills, God has got us 40 years. 40 years of God's faithfulness. Do you think that's evidence that God is gonna be faithful to us for another 40? God has been faithful in the past. I don't know what you're going through in the present, whether or not you're wondering about Christmas, whether or not you're having difficulties with family, and this is always a tough time around the year, whether or not you're out of work, wondering, can I put Christmas presents under the tree for my kids, whether or not you're wondering where that Christmas ham's gonna come from, or maybe you're dealing with the loss of a loved one, and this will be the first Christmas that you are alone. Do you trust that God is in control? Do you trust that the God who saw you through countless unexpected things in the past will see you through this? And do you remember that the story's not over? As long as you are breathing, your story's not over, but even after we stop breathing and we go to be with the Lord, the story of the church isn't over. It's not over until Jesus comes again. We long for that day in much the same way that Mary and all of the Jewish people long for the the first coming of the Messiah. We long for that day. But you have to think how many people before Mary died in faith holding on to the promises of God. Everyone in this room might die holding on to the promise of, of the second coming of Jesus but we hold on knowing that God's promises are certain. As we enter this time of reflection, I want you to think about the past. I want you to think about that time when something unexpected happened to you. Maybe this is a painful experience for you. Maybe it's a time where you think back and you you can't believe that that happened. Maybe you still blame God for that thing. I want you to think about how did it turn out? How did that unexpected thing turn out? Was it a good outcome? You're still here, so there's something. But I want you to think, how can you use that experience, that experience of God coming through for you, to prepare for those unexpected events in your future? How can you use the past to prepare for the future? And I want you to also think about this, is that unexpected things aren't always bad. Sure, we have unexpected things like a car accident on our way to work, but every once in a while, something truly unexpectedly good happens. Maybe somebody comes through for us. Maybe we get a promotion that we didn't expect. Maybe there are things that are good. Somebody gives you a present or a Christmas card. Or maybe there is that person that you've been praying for for years to give their life to Jesus finally comes around. And then I have to think, how many of us have ever brought something unexpectedly good to somebody else's life. Those unexpected good things that we have the opportunity to do. Whether or not it's a smile, maybe it's letting somebody merge on the highway instead of running up on them and making them get behind you. Maybe it's blessing a homeless person or somebody that you know is struggling You can do it anonymously. You can do it, you know, just give it to them. Blessing a stranger. So my challenge for you is this week, do something unexpected for somebody else that makes a positive impact. We are an international church. And we love bringing people 
from the nations to us. In January, we're actually going to have a group of six Chinese girls come over from China to stay with us for five weeks. Ann Flood has, has worked on this and she's talking about this with me getting really excited, but she needs some help from some of you. And, and I'd like to put a further challenge to you because maybe this is something that might be unexpected for you, but would you be willing? We need three families that would be willing to open up their homes to just two Chinese girls for those five weeks. Something unexpected for them that you would be willing, and, and I'm not going to give you all the details, but maybe you're kind of like, well, I can do that. I can do that. I want you to go and I want you to talk to Ann Flood and just say, hey, you know, maybe you're like, no, you know, no promises, but I want more information. Maybe you'd be willing to interrupt your life, something that's unexpected for you, to be an unexpected blessing to those two girls for those five weeks. If that piques your interest or maybe you feel the Holy Spirit or your wife giving you a nudge in the side, please talk to Ann Flood. This is one of those opportunities where the mission trip comes to us instead of us going to the mission field. So as we close this message, just think of that. Think of those two things, that reflection. Think of a time when something unexpected happened. How did it turn out? And how can you use that experience to prepare for unexpected events in the future? And then I would like you to commit to doing something unexpected for somebody else this coming week. Be an unexpected blessing to somebody whether you know them or not, and do it in the name of Jesus Christ. So as we enter this time of reflection, as Josh plays, take this time to reflect on these things.